screen looks a little confusing right now, but as you uh, kind of get used to it over the next 10 or 15 minutes, you'll see that it flows real naturally. And so uh, I've got a new query ready to go, and we just do that by clicking that little new. And what I want to see is I want to see some sort of product information. I'm going to say product series. And then I want to see some sort of statistical information, like uh, uh, we're just going to say uh, units sold. And I'm just going to pick a short date range so, so the report will go fast. And I'm just going to say the first week of April. So we're going to say the first week of April. And then we just click Run. And so now what we'll see is it's, is it's going out compiling the data. And now we'll see a little screen that pops up with our product series and units sold. Here at this point, we can just click on the column headings to resort it. It shows that there's 10 rows and there's uh, 3,161 units uh, total. The next thing you might say was, I'd literally like to see uh, what customers are buying those product series. Right. And so uh, instead of doing customers, because that'll bring in quite a bit of quite a bit of detail behind it. To start with, I'm just going to say customer type. So what kind of customers are buying these uh, product series? Do you know what I mean when I say product series? Uh, That's kind of like a collection of books. Okay. Like uh, um, the boxcar children. In this case, I have uh, some science fiction data that I've kind of right. collected over the years. And I wanted to be generic. And so I have like the Lord of the Rings series, so it has everything to do with the Lord of the Rings. Or uh, I have Elvira, you know, and so it'd be like maybe some series of her movies or something. <clears throat> and so we click Run. Now added to that mix is going to be not only the product series, but now we're going to see the different customer types that are buying it. And so we just click on the columns again to resort it. And so now we say, okay, that's nice. I'd like to see what my sales were. And so now we come back out and we just add under our sales information, we can then add net sales. And um, so you get to just keep building on this query as you're Exactly, as you're exactly. It's just flowing. Okay. And uh, we do that by picking things. I'm going to show you how we can drill around in it. So now I've added sales. And I want to see my sales column in front of my units column, so I can just bring it over and, and drag it over there. Um, we we can also do what's called a spread column. It's this thing that kind of looks like a spatula spreading some butter. And so I just plop that up there. Now you can see it's in yellow. And we can see that our retailers are making up 37% of our sales, but they're not buying from any particular series. If I were to look at my Elvira series, I can see that the uh, retailers are buying that. You know, my series sales are only making up 0.6% uh, of my sales. We can add another one in, and we can get the units out of it now. So now we can see our retailers are not buying from any particular series, but uh, the sales is making up uh, 20, approximately 25% of our sales. Um, but that represents 37% of our products being moved. I've got a bunch of books that don't belong to a particular series because some books are just standalone. And so these are books, this UNK that's unknown. The UNK is just books that aren't identified or associated with the series are making up 25% of our revenue. Oh, I see. I, I thought we were just looking at series. I'm sorry. Thank well, you. we are, but we've got, because we want to see the mix, we need to see our total product sold because we haven't added any filtering yet, and we will add some filtering. Thank you. But, but so we've got books that are now being commingled with our books that are associated with series. All right. So, so retailers are 35% of your sales of Alvira, right? Uh, that's Point. correct. Well, that's 0.35, so it's less than 1%. 0.35. I, I have a real small set of data, so. And 0.60 is it across the board for all sales? 
Units sold. Y yeah, that's units sold. Oh, units sold. He, he broke it out in percentages of the sale dollars and then percentage of the units sold. Right. That's what the two columns are. But what's interesting is that we have catalog houses are making up 46% of our revenue, but we're only moving 38% of our units. So our catalog houses are actually more profitable for us right. because we have greater dollars, less units. Right. So we've done our, better in marketing. <laughs> you have better marketing. <laughs> okay. Exactly right. All right. So now what we could do is we could say, well, I'd like to see what these catalog houses are buying that aren't associated with series. And so what we do is there's a little checkbox here that we can then say, I want to look at my catalog houses. So it just allows you to kind of pick as long as you can see it on the screen. Um, you could also pick it from the other screen. I'll show you that. So now what we're going to see is you can see under customer type how it now has catalog houses. Mm -hmm. Now when we run this, it's going to show um, our catalog houses apparently aren't buying anything associated with series. <coughs> now if we wanted to see the books that lay underneath that, then we just come over here and select product. And then when we run it, now we're going to see the products that are associated with that, with those sales. So can you see how I'm drilling down into it? Mm -hmm. And so what we can do is we can kind of do a little bit of uh, uh, clean up on this, but when I mean clean up, uh, we can just format this a little bit. Right now, we only have one product series, so we don't need to be repeating that over and over. We only have one customer type, so we don't need to be repeating that over. A uh, uh, sales. And we can either remove the column by just clicking it here and removing it. And, uh, or um, in this case, the customer type, we need this because we're filtering on it, I'm just, but I'm just going to hide it. So now what we'll see is catalog house sales for period beginning, and now we see the product, and now we see the sales. And so we can filter on it and see what, what is our number one selling book to catalog houses for this period of time. Oh, that's great. <clears throat> So I think you're getting the idea how you, it's pretty infinite, the iterations you can get on this. Now, we can say, let's see who's buying these. And so now we can add the customer into it, the mix. And we run it. Now we can see the product and the bill to. I'm going to bring this over here. <clears throat> and so here's our bill to's. And here's the products they're buying. We can put it in what we call a tree view, which gives us subtotals. And then we can come to this Woodcraft Supply Corp, and we can open that up and now see the products that they're buying. Right. Now, I'm going to click on this uh, little email button. Now, what it's doing is at this point, it's actually opening up my email, and it's created an email message. And so you can see when it it then formats it into what looks like what, lo what we saw on the screen with the same colors. So then I can send that to you, Paul. Then we can also do things like send it to Excel. Now this Excel and emailing function are available on all the reports within. And so now it's brought it up into Excel. It formats it with subtotals. If we do a print preview, you can see it has our column headings, page totals, and everything on it. Uh, does your Excel require a certain uh, level of release of Excel? It needs to be Excel 2003 or greater. Okay. Microsoft provides to us developers a whole toolkit that we interface with so that we can control Excel. Now, I think you get the idea of how we can drill through this. We're pretty infinite in the number of um, ways that we can run this. At this point,